for me it's just kind of like my way of life it's not something I think or plan to do I just feel like it's a natural part of me and um, my name is Nicola Hebson um, I'm a taxidermist but I prefer to call myself an artist because it's not normal taxidermy <laughs> Taxidermy, the art of uh, operation, of uh, preparing, stuffing and mounting the skins of dead animals for exhibition in a lifelike state. That's the That's definition yes, of that yes, taxidermist, yes. a craftsman who stuffs and mounts the skins of animals for display. Or Nicola Hebson. Great. Yeah. Did you paint that? Yeah. It's good. Oh, I really like it. Um, it kind of just like naturally progressed from the art degree that I was doing. I was doing painting and photography. Um, I kept seeing like roadkill everywhere, so um, I liked taking pictures of it and using it as references to paint from. And then one day I just thought, oh, I wonder if I could like preserve the dead animals that I find. I didn't necessarily think it was taxidermy, but like I didn't think that's what I was gonna do but then I just ended up doing it and just going down that route. I've been doing it like 10 years, that's crazy. I can't believe it's been 10 years. For me, it's just kind of like my way of life. It's not something I think or plan to do. I just feel like it's a natural part of me, as weird as that sounds. <laughs> so it's quite a weird thing to like naturally be a part of you, but. So they get rusty because it's always damp and then they're hard to get back on. You might to use like these special, I think they're called calipers. It's like you wind it and it goes up and down and it's to measure but I don't have one of them so I just use the tape measure. <laughs> I mean, a, a professional taxidermist, they, well, not exactly professional, um, they like inject the eye and then make it go big so it looks like it's alive and then measure it. I don't do that. Um, when I lived with my grandma years and years ago when I was like 22 or something, um, I used to practice taxidermy in a shed and I thought that she'd be a bit like displeased by it, but she was like really interested in it. And whenever I had dead animals, she'd always um, like come and be really interested in like, oh, what have you got now? And like, she once helped me carry a badger <laughs> that got her to the shed. And then um, she said to me that, I think it was my great, great granddad or my great, great, great granddad was um, a taxidermist of sorts. Like he used to get um, cow hides and make them into waistcoats for children I think she said or different bits and bobs and I've got his journal and it's from like the 1920s and she said like it's in your blood to do this kind of thing so you should carry on with it so I thought oh that's another reason that made me want to carry on doing it. So when I first started doing taxidermy I kind of wasn't as ethical as I am now. I didn't kill anything but I sometimes would get them from like pet shops the animals that had died and since I've realised it's probably like it's not normal for them to die so much from the pet shop that I got them from because <laughs> I don't think they were looking after the animals right but I was just learning but then the more I've gotten into it and I was like went vegetarian and vegan and like vegetarian again and I've like learned different things I've decided to just be quite strict with how I get animals so I just it's just what I find on the road basically because I have other art that I do I don't rely on it all the time to like constantly need a feed of dead animals coming in to make art out. I've just used what I find and that's like Maastricht moral thing. And I find insects and stuff and make them into jewellery as well, so. I haven't done painting for quite a while. I'm hoping to get back into it. Cause uh, <clears throat> I'd, I want to create my taxidermy dioramas, which is like taxidermy scenes where there's animals, not dressed up per se, but like, I don't know. Just in situations that are sort of uncanny and like interesting and like 
curiosity things and then I wanted to use them as subjects to paint pictures and then have it as like a all together round exhibition of painting and taxidermy and I do jewellery as well my jewellery is called um, dead good jewellery because <laughs> I use dead things <laughs> Is this your full time job? Yeah it is now, I've had a few different part time jobs in the past um, like working as a waitresses and um, working in shops and stuff but now yeah I'm self employed full time What do other people think about your taxidermy? Back when I first started doing it properly it was like 2011, 2012 and like nobody really did it then I don't think like when I told people what it was like people just didn't even like know what taxidermy was and I have to explain it um, yeah and I did get a few like hateful messages online well quite a lot in the beginning like people would just I don't know go to town just saying stuff but I guess people do that online anyway about anything like keyboard warrior type thing but then since then it seems like taxidermy has become really like popular and um, you see it in like home wear magazines and stuff like it's a popular thing like a country living stuff but I'm not really interested in that sort of trophy taxidermy I like the taxidermy that I do is more like um, art like art I'd say it's art really I'd finished my degree and uh, it was like a painting degree but it was like integrated media and I just decided to do taxidermy because I just really enjoyed it, it was something different I like getting my hands dirty <laughs> um, and yeah so I was making taxidermy pieces and then I got um, a phone call from someone what was it from the Daily Mail saying they want to do an article on my work and then at first I was like really nervous and then I thought oh well maybe this is like a sign that I should just go for it and then yeah some guy just came in and said he'd just been doing a paparazzi run for Kate Moss and they needed to get back to London as quick as possible and sat me down and bombarded me with questions and I was like only like 21 like what? <laughs> yeah he just did this awful article on me that I hated and made me cry and lots of people gave me grief for it online but then that kind of like led on to other stuff because obviously it's a big newspaper and then I was on this program called No County for Old Men which is like a play on No Country for Old Men but it was about I feel really bad that I don't remember the names <laughs> two famous-ish people off a guy from the fast show is it John Tompkinson or something yeah and they ca came to my house and talked about my taxidermy and then we went to my old college and used one of the studios at my college and I taught them how to taxidermy a rat. Blackburn College! <laughs> That's where my wife went and did fashion. Nicola was studying art at a local college when her passion for taxidermy took hold. In the name of art, the college let Nicola pursue her love of stuffing. Um, I'm going to demonstrate how to taxidermy this rat and then you can have a go on this one. So what I usually do is start off by getting it like this. Get his legs out as if as if as if um, right. he's being arrested by the police. <laughs> yeah. The following program may contain scenes of an unsettling nature, especially to rat audiences. <laughs> I remember I accidentally stabbed my uh, hand with the scalpel <laughs> and I had to pretend that I didn't and I was just like screaming in my head like and smiling like <laughs> um, so yeah I did that with them that was that was really good actually because I had quite a good rapport with them and like we were laughing and joking a lot and it was quite like funny and stuff this morning rang me <laughs> and said do you want like an all expenses paid trip and come down and talk about the show and I really didn't want to do it I really didn't and then because I just I don't know just find it really cringy but I thought well I should just do it I put myself out there so yeah I went down there and I did that and then Holly just hated it I knew she did and then Philip was like it's all right and then I made a badge out of a, a little mouse that like, curled up with like gems for eyes and then I like put it on him and then because I, I think you meant to like sit there and just be really reserved and I just stood up and like pinned this badge on him 
And then I remember on Twitter, like, loads of people, like, wrote stuff about it. In. That's, yeah, a, that's, that's like a little brooch. brooch, is it, that one? I think that you should try it on. Well, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, should I? I'm not... Uh, well, it's up to oh. you. Steady on with that sharp object. <laughs> Before I know it, I'll be full of stuffing. Thank you. Wow. Well, I don't know about that, but... Look, it suits you. Does it? Philip, yes. I'm not entirely sure. It looks like it's running up my shirt. <laughs> it's asleep. I don't know. <laughs> and that kind of like kicked off. It was like one thing after another over the space of a few years, and then Vice magazine got in contact with me. And they wanted to do an actual video, Vice America. But I said no, because I didn't want to be filmed, because I was having a bad time without my mental health and stuff. I was like, I can't cope with that. Right, no, I kind of wish that I did sometimes, but I'm kind of glad that I didn't. I don't know, because you know Vice can twist things, not like, well, everyone else did, but... Um, so I just did, like, an article with them. And then I think a few years after that, I got contacted by Channel 4, and then I did... I was on 15 minutes of a documentary called um, All Creatures Great and Stuffed, and then this uh, filmmaker... Um, and his PA like followed me around for like three months, like a couple of times a week. And they filmed me taxidermy and a uh, hedgehog called Sheldon. <laughs> um, and that was, that was really fun actually. After I did the documentary of Channel 4, um, I put all my work on eBay and I was watching the program when it was first on TV and within an hour I sold like all my work, <laughs> which was crazy. Um, yeah, I go to festivals and um, because I, I get, well, I do taxidermy, obviously, but because I'm self-employed, I, I get a lot of my money from my smaller pieces of work, which is my jewellery pieces, which are, well, they're like little art pieces in themselves, because I find uh, dead insects on windowsills, or people bring them to me. But sometimes I take some smaller bits of taxidermy to festivals. At Beat Herder, I have a shop there, and I have most of my taxidermy in there. In the future, have my pieces become more and more detailed, more dynamic, um, and I want to create paintings that sort of um, complement my taxidermy. I'm hoping to do an exhibition at some point where it's like paintings and taxidermy, and, and then you look at the paintings, like, oh yeah, that's in, that's an interesting idea, like whimsical little scenes of little animals doing things, and then in the next room, it's like. They're actually there in real life. Like real life dead animals doing things like what you saw in the paintings. I don't know, that's just kind of like my long term goal at the moment. But I don't know. I never expected I'd do this when I was younger, so who knows what's gonna happen. <laughs>